What is going on everyone? My name's Boyt and I'm back with some more Age of Mythology. The Titans action spawning in the bottom of the map in the teal color, in the sky blue color, playing as Poseidon. His name is Zokyo. His partner today in the green color, playing as Hades. His name is Pharaon. And, or Pharaon? Pharaon? Pharaon. And finally, rounding out the team in the... That is the weirdest yellow. Is that just me? Or does that yellow look like... It doesn't quite look yellow. It kind of looks like an orangey color. Anyways, yellow color. I think I'm going insane. Does it look the same over on there? Yeah, it does. Weird. Okay, in the yellow color, his name is Sparks. And together, they are the GDM clan. Their opponents today in the purple color, playing as Ra from the Cud clan, he is Cough Virus. Spartans today in the red color, playing as Loki. His name is Ninho. And finally, we do have Mosca. That's the Hades player. The map is Anatolia. First week of Phoenix Reborn. We've seen uh, some pretty good games, some pretty fun games thus far. If I take a quick look here at who was banning what here. In this one, we saw GDM, I believe, banned Zeus and Cud banned Thor. It's a really interesting ban here on Anatolia. There are some people out there who believe that the meta team composition or the meta god on Ant Anatolia is Loki and that the counter to Loki is Thor. So if you don't ban Thor on this map and you pick Loki, you do have that possibility of kind of getting countered by a Thor player, which in my opinion is actually kind of the kind of true that being said that being said i don't want to start anything here but there's some pretty cheesy game there's some pretty cheesy strats you can do on anatolia that have not been investigated in the slightest here the actual meta on anatolia is like and the thing that everyone just accepts is the way to play no, no, no. There's some fun things you can do on this map. I'm not going to reveal too much. I always like to hold a little bit of that uh, of that strategy to myself. Have a think about what you could potentially do on an Anatolia game that might be really obnoxiously strong, especially against certain gods that get picked quite a lot here. I'll let you have a think about it. Let me know what you uh, what you come up with. But we'll see what's going to happen here. In this one, as uh, this game's gonna be a cracker, I'm sure. Alrighty, we've got the uh, the Zokio fishing ships starting to come out. The map is Anatolia. Oftentimes, what we see on this map is we see Loki kind of taking the back position of, as we are seeing here from Sparks, the back position of the water going onto the land, and we see the uh, the the two side players. We see a nice little spawn here for uh, for Cut as they get the perfect pocket loki and doing doing the same thing also going on the land so it's going to be two players on the sea one player on the land and generally speaking the players that split the side 1v1 are the players who go for a uh, a slinging strategy so you spam out all your wood and gold onto um onto uh what's it called onto triremes or onto archer ships and you spend the 50 food you do on, or 50 food of your income every 40 seconds on your town center, on your villages training there. So that's uh, 50, 200 food a minute you have to keep for yourself. The rest of that food is going to go over to the Loki player. And he's just going to take really fast, get 115 population hersa, and start causing a lot of chaos. Here. We'll see if that's what the players will end up doing in this game. As you do see, Ninho dropping that temple in the middle. Sparks here playing a more defensive opening. I kind of, honestly, I do kind of like the defensive opening in a way as a meta game to the meta game, so to speak. As Sparks starting to move forward here, going to be dropping some longhouses all around on the center of the map. We do see the uh, the relic getting grabbed here. Bridal of Pegasus is not a bad relic there for Ninho to pick up in the slightest. As we're starting to see sparks moving across the map. Going to be going after this temple. Seeing how 
uh, seeing if you can get some value done. Meanwhile, we see a whole bunch of docs coming up on the front here for cough virus. This is actually a, a strategy that we don't see very much of late. It's an older strategy, just tons of docks on the side at the front here. Makes it really tough to push through. So you can just play a defensive game as the uh, as the Egyptian player. It's a good idea. Nice uh, nice strat there for from uh, from Virus as he's trying to take. As we do see Sparks here, almost going to be taking out that troll. Might be able to catch up to it as we do see that Ninjo decides to abandon that one for the time being. The uh, Katoska bots here going to get sniped down, getting that one favor in nicely there. As the Hurst are going to be retreating back. And we'll see how things start shaping up on this one. As one Hurst are going to be getting taken down. The uh, Hurst of Nino trying to get that damage done. But Sparks, he's got himself Hall of Fans coming through. He's got himself the Hurst are coming through. A little bit of an earlier Hall of Fans than Ninho. Ninho trying to get those longhouses down on the back. Generally speaking, if you start that fighting really, really early, you're going to be floating resources. So lots of resources here for Ninho and for Sparks going unspent for the time being as the Archer ship's coming through, trying to get some value on this water here, trying to get some good uh, trades happening as well. As Mosca comes in, going to start trying to take out Zokio on this position. We do see the Ares coming through. The Pestilence getting dropped down on this position. Going to be giving Sparks a big, big advantage moving forward here uh team g wait yes team gdm do they also have they also probably have a restoration here as well which i absolutely love as ninho going to be retreating back sparks chasing him down at this point trying to get little bits of damage done it's really really important for the uh for the water fighters to not overcommit unless they really know 100 percent they're going to be winning the fights you absolutely just cannot lose water in these situations here as the player protecting the the loki plate you can kind of lose the bottom water and it might not matter that much but if you lose the water where the loki player is you basically say goodbye to your chances to win the game and we are seeing virus being Maybe a little bit too over-aggressive, a little bit too keen. He is up against the Hades, who's got the extra uh, damage coming out of that dock. Uh, plus, he's got the range in the trireme, so pushing in and out here is not going to be that useful here for, uh, for Cough Virus. We'll see if it's going to work out for him or not. As the uh, Cyclops comes through for Zokyo, going to help take out this forward base of Ninho. Ninho... Uh, over here does see some uh, some green units. Some green hoplites are in. This is interesting. So, Farron has decided instead of tributing over to Sparks to boost him up, he's going to be spending that excess food and a little bit of gold on hoplites here, which should give Virus the opportunity to win this water, but... Farron is holding here decently. At the moment, we do see a slight edge on boat numbers here for Virus, but Farron has got plenty of uh, defenses here with the dock, with everything else coming forward. We see he's also got the defender's advantage on that position as well. As the building's in the middle here, Hall of Thane's getting denied there on Nino's back, and we'll see if he's going to be able to get that anywhere. More Hursa are, are trying to come out. You can kind of build some throwing action at this point if you're Nino, but really, you don't want to. You want to be building as many Hursa as you possibly can, because it's going to mean that you can start moving around the map much faster and getting some good trades going on as we do see the restoration getting dropped down there by moscow on this position remember there is another restoration remaining there for farron but sparks and uh and team gdm decide instead of just trading one for one they're gonna pull back regroup he's got the iron ER advantage to some degree here because he can bring it in maybe pick off this iron ER wouldn't be a bad idea here pull back these hersa but we do see a nice trade there by nino the restoration getting dropped now by farron and nino gonna be retreating back there for the time being as it looks like farron is held over here virus has got a lot of ships up on this bottom side of, or down on this bottom side of the map here we see zokyo with the trireme defending nicely uh, against mosca but mosca and mosca and zokyo it looks like mosca is getting the better deal of it at the moment and i have this feeling that mosca is trading food or slinging food over to ninho to keep him afloat in this game to some degree because 
I don't, I have this feeling that Zokyo isn't at the moment. I don't know 100%, but we'll see how things could go. If there's potentially going to be a heroic age coming through here for Zokyo fairly shortly. In fact, let's take a quick look at it. He's got himself a lot of food in the bank, so he's not trading that. Whereas if we take a look at, um, at Mosca, he's all, oh. That's a lot of fun. Okay, so both of those bottom players, they aren't going for the sling. So Mosca can end, um, Mosca and Zokyo can kind of rush the next age here moving forward. As we see Hall of Thanes finally coming in, but has Sparks got enough of an advantage moving forward in this game or not? As the troll does end up getting taken down here. Hersa spawning over here as well. And Pegasus checking this one out as Farron is getting a little bit antsy with those boats. Again, like I was saying, you don't want to get too aggressive here. Just hold the water. Try and get that heroic age in. If you find yourself getting the upgrades and having an advantage where that's concerned, then push. But if you're equal in damage, no upgrade advantage over your opponent, you can kind of just take it easy and just say, you know what, we're going to start getting town centers. Play for the next portion of the game. Call it a day. But Ninho still putting pressure uh, or trying to defend this position as Sparks is going for a town center. <coughs> Right in his face as we see Bragi coming through here for Sparks. Nice job on that one. Nino on the other hand here, looks like he's defended for the time being. He's gotten his units out and Sparks is going to be looking for something else to target down. We do see that Sparks has actually gotten a back town center here as well. He's got to have been getting fed here by someone at this point. That's so That's such an advantage. Two town centers. Heroic edge coming through. Plus full, fully upgraded units or fully populated units here for Sparks as well. So fighting still continues over here. We do see <coughs> it looks like Mosca has kind of won the, the, the water down the bottom. Zokyo is in a pretty difficult position. In team games, if you're in a challenging position, you've got to kind of rely on your teammates to help you out in some way, shape, or form. So... We'll see how it's going to go, but the uh, the village is going to be retreating back and all the good stuff here. We do see the towns center up in the middle of the map there for Ninho. Ninho is still not going to the next age. We do see Bragi's already in for Sparks. Sparks should be looking for fights onto Ninho at this point. Having the uh, heroic age advantage means you get more stats onto your Hursa here. He's also, both players have got a little bit of armory upgrades here as the Hursa coming through. We do see an INER spawn there as well. A little bit of migrate would go a long way. Flaming weapons getting dropped down. Nino's just going to retreat back. You never want to be using that flaming weapons in a fight against the Loki player who's got the same amount of speed issue. Just go and attack their base and click flaming weapons is generally speaking the better play. But we do see Sparks has got an idea behind this as he's going after the town center over here. Meanwhile, we see Farron starting to push forward here, and he looks like he's going to be able to take down all the fishing ships of Ninjo and everyone else over here. So that's really, really big. Rain coming in here. Thor virus as well as he's given up on the water. Wants that little bit of extra food to get him going. Bragi on the way now for Ninjo as well. The flaming weapons is still here for Sparks. He's getting value out of this. Nino's got no reason to be taking this fight here. He does have a decent position over here. Plus, he's got a little bit of help from Mosca's Sentinels. But Sparks retreats. Oh, Sparks gets the win there, and Nino has to retreat back. He's going to lose all these longhouses, lose the town center, lose some villages. Great play here from Sparks. At this moment, we do see the, the units are starting to build up over here as Zokyo is getting involved. Mosca coming in here with his already heavy hoplites as well there. As the Hursa fighting continues here, but no ability to kick, click that, uh, no ability to click that flaming weapons. He does have that defense's advantage with all of these military buildings spamming out Hursa here, but does it matter in the slightest? Yes, it does. Nino clicks the flaming weapons and Sparks is out of here, but he gets stuck on the healing spring for whatever reason. There's this weird hitbox on that one. Nino moving forward with those dwarves. Got to be careful with those in the center of the map. As Farron trying to work this one out in the middle of the map against the, uh, the impending really, really strong uh, virus Ra economy. He's got the farm set up. Even though he's picked off all the fishing ships on the top, you've still got to be worrying about how big that Ra is going to be. And we have a little bit of a lull now, but Zokyo is still putting pressure onto Mosca. Mosca is the big threat here for Team GDM. But they've got Farron and they've got Sparks, so a big Greek doesn't matter as much 
when you've got a big Greek as well, it starts being a problem when you've got like a, only a big Norse or, or something like that, maybe a big Atlantean. Not going to be able to deal with the big Greek, but we'll see how things are going to go. Shifting Sands coming through for Virus here, trying to grab this gold mine in the center of the map. You can drop a Migdol down here once he hits that next age, secure this position. And he's got enough villages on a gold mine to, to deal with that, get a market set up and start that trade route going as soon as he possibly can here. So the town center trying to get taken down. We do see the Achilles about to come through here for Farron as well as the uh, Frost Giant trying to take down some of those villages there as well. Ninho going to be pushing through here looking for whatever he can find. Remember the big thing that happens on Anatolia is when you hit that mid game, when all the gold mines are expired in the main base, everyone starts moving forward. So all the villagers go from a very, very defensive position to a very, very uh, weak and def and defenseless position to some uh, to some degree here, as you can see. Ninho's uh, dwarves here getting pushed back off of this gold mine. Big, big raid there for Sparks, and Nino is going to be in a very difficult position moving forward, but he is defending nicely thus far. And we do see on this position, still no town center up there. Would love to see that one getting grabbed by uh, by GDM there. Sparks a little bit slow on that one there as well. That's the Migdol coming up here for Virus. Going to be able to start getting those chariots, getting those camelry out and everything else. But we do see Zokyo. He is not letting those dwarves just get away from here. Those dwarves are getting sniped down and we also see Zokyo hitting the Mythic Age here through Hephaestus. As the Dwarves getting cleaned up in this position nicely. Villages of Moscow also going down. Moscow focusing in the center of the map here. As Farron trying to get up a, a fortress here. Going to get put a stop to that one. A lot of villages going down here as well. Great find there by Moscow. Really making up for that raid that Zokyo just hit there. And this center gold mine is not going to be uh, a gold mine that, that is getting secured there for Farron there as he retreats away with his gold villages. He does have a gold mine down the bottom there, so a bit surprised how uh, antsy he was to try and get that one up there as well. And we'll see how things are going to go as the house does end up getting taken down. Villages retreating back here. Healing Spring going to be holding on to this location there as well. Sparks trying to push through and trying to take everything else out over there as well, but not going the best for him there is a fortress now coming up for Farron again trying to get that one down to secure a gold mine as we do see Moscow coming up here with his own Chiron to help out against all these myth units a lot of chaos at the moment as uh everyone is kind of just letting it happen as we do see a uh, plenty vault comes through and the uh, locust gets dropped down on this position. One, two, three, four, five villagers getting to not the best of locusts, but obviously not a bad locust there either. In these sorts of Anatolia games, locust is so brutal because you can't really spread your gold villagers out. You're like, I need to defend them. I can't spread them out. Otherwise, I'm just going to get raided into the ground. As uh, we see some more of these buildings coming up on this position for Farron as he's trying to Hold on here. We do see the, t the Migdal Stronghold going to go down there for Virus as well. That's the Hursa swinging through onto this position looking for something to do. The Farron Fortress will be able to go down now after the uh, Locust is finished. And Zokyo after having some difficulties here in this game. He's actually booming back up. He's still got fishing ships on this part of the map here as well. He's got the farm set up. He's got some economy coming up. He does have some catching up to do to get, to get up to where Mosca is. But he hit the Mythic Age first. He's got those Petropoli out. I'd love to see him switch into the Heliopoli, which is exactly what he's going to be doing. And in all honesty, being behind in the Greek War, so long as you've got Toxodes, so long as you've got Heliopoli, up wide, so long as you've got Colossus out, you can't really ask for much more than that. Sure, a couple of armory upgrades, it's not going to make that much of a difference if you got the best army composition out. As we see a whole bunch of upgrades coming through for Sparks here as well, as we haven't yet seen anyone attempting to get in to the side builds here. This is where things get weird in this Anatolia game is when players start getting in to these positions over here or over here on this uh, back spot here for GDM. You do have uh, Mo Mosca trying to get those fortresses up. It is imperative to get one, two, three fortresses up as of the Greek players in these games to pump out those Heliopoli as fast as you possibly can. And we still haven't seen Sparks being able to grab this town center. I'm not sure what the idea is there for 
GDM. Maybe Farron could grab that one, give the population over to him, maybe feed a little bit over to Farron to support that town center as an idea. But we see both uh, the Hells coming in at exactly the same time here for Ninho and for Sparks there as the town center over here looks like it's been taken out as well. As the game continues along. Metropolis going to be taking down those longhouses here, seeing how things will end up going on. As the, uh, the Nidhogs get to say hi to each other, they can fight each other, but it's kind of a bit of a, a waste where that's concerned. Get your Fire Giant involved, start targeting down the uh, the Nidhogg, and you can keep, pick, pick it off pretty quickly. Fire Giant, Troll, those are the sorts of units you use to, to kill off a, a Nidhogg. Yeah, you've got the Throwing Axeman with the upgrade, but it doesn't matter that much. You just want to get the Troll in there or the Fire Giant to chase it around. That's your best bet. It's the Priest throwing some of those special Balls of Fury onto the Mountain Giant there as the Town Center going to be coming up there for Sparks. Finally... Uh, we do see the trade routes have basically started for everyone, so even losing the center of the map, that doesn't dictate the end of this game, especially when there's a RAR player on your team. One RAR player, one uh, perfect trade route means a lot of gold to be coming through, as we do see Moscow already fully uh, teched up, but guess what? Zokyo, he's already caught up in score. He is in a fantastic position now to compete against Moscow. Moving forward, he's already got himself the, uh, the 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 engineered Heliopolis. He's already got himself champion champion Hippocon. He's already got the the Toxodes. There's no real need to build yourself hoplites here either. If your opponent's making hoplites, you can just go pure Toxodes, no problems where that's concerned. Though he he is Poseidon, so obviously wanted to make some value out of the Hippocon there. As Full Iron coming through, we take a quick look at the blue military units of Mosca. He's only got himself full copper, so he's got some catching up to do there. Sparks also getting himself those iron weapons as the town center. Still not quite up, but it does look like Farron and Sparks have managed to hold that position there as well. In this center here where there once was a, a Migdol, completely clear, cleared up. So Virus is basically subject back up onto this location here as well as the army of uh, GDM pushes Virus back with Mosca and Nino trying to hold here against Zokyo. I mean, not really doing a poor job of it, but being able to push back here against the Poseidon, it's tough because the militia pop out and you end up having to fight against more than you expect on these sorts of situations. Zokyo now has himself Divine Blood as well, which means the buildings, they're going to come up really, really quickly, ladies and gentlemen. I don't believe it counts um, counts towers, no. But it does count fortresses, I believe. So you can get those up incredibly quickly. That's the army of Virus pulling back here. We'll see if Virus can hold. He's having a very, very tough time in this game, economically speaking. Same too with Farron, but now Farron is Mythic Age, and he has a Plenty Vault. This really helps prop up the. Um, this really helps prop up the 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 Greek player as Underworld Pass is getting dropped. He drops the Underworld Passage to try and defend against Moscow, who's going in onto the trade route. This is really tough as well. It's super hard to select all your trade and change it to a different location. So you can get a lot of value here as the Heliopoli pushing through. Farron going to have to defend this one somehow. There's no real way for Zokyo to pull back here, I don't think easily. We do see some villagers coming in to try and shank this one down as the Colossus of Farron is already on to this position here. We've also got some uh, Patropoli coming through here to uh, take out the Underworld Passage. Mosca's attack here not working out as best as he might have, as well as he might have thought here as the Town Center also stays alive there for Farron able to shank the, the uh, Heliopolis down with his villagers there as that Underworld Passage with tons of villagers ends up getting denied 
Not going to be able to keep that one alive there. And it does look to me like GDM has held this underworld passage for the time being. While that's going on, Virus not able to push through here just yet. The Ballister holds on this position as well as the towers coming through to help that slow push come in. As the villagers here for Zokyo, they're going to be getting back to what they need to do. The, the defense has happened. The attack is over, and now back into the center of the map. It seems walls coming up across the entire map here for Farron. Love that play. Don't let your opponents sneak through. There is always going to be sneaky transport shena ship shenanigans on these sorts of maps, especially from player one. If you take a look at the mini map, you go, I mean, you just don't see anything there. Sure, it is kind of blue, but you don't see it. So the fishing ships can, uh, not fishing ships, but transport ships can come through and start seeing this one. And we do see that Ninho is trying this out a little bit, trying to get onto these corners here. But Sokyo is putting a stop to that one nicely as he's starting to push through. He got lots and lots of towers up though for Ninho on this position with the with the fire giants as well. So we got the baluster fire giant tower situation set up here so he should be able to hold here for quite some time but there might just be too much population here from gdm as the titan gate comes down for sparks gonna be doing the oldest trick in the book converting those villages into old sarks so he loses seven population in terms of villages but gains um Oh, sorry, loses 14 population in villages there, but gains 14 population or, or gains 28 population in uh, uh, total. So he actually ends up gaining 14 population there. So he's lost out that on the front. He's going to be able to get that Titan gate up relatively quickly there as the town center there for Ninho does end up falling after the pressure uh, has mounted too much there. What is Mosca doing at this moment is the big question. As we see a Titan gate coming down now, for virus here you've got to get those titans out it can be quite challenging we see the titan age coming through for mosca as well as maybe getting things like weapons of the titans here is not a priority for farron putting that favor into a titan gate or into a titan age would be a much better idea at the moment we'll see how things are going to go if GDM can deal with all of this, as the Ulf Sark's going to try and shoot this town center back up. But as we always say, it can be impossible to get a town center back up for a Norse player if there's a fight going on. Because you've got so much population focused on that town center going up that your opponent can just put two, uh, could put four or five population into siege to stop it from finishing off there. As we see more of these Heliopoli coming through for Farron and Nino, he basically has to be subjected to just spamming those towers up as another Titan Gate ends up coming through here for Mosca. And he's building that one up. No attempt to put a stop to those. Do see an attempt at a cheeky side build here, but not going to be coming through anytime uh, soon. And we see Mosca saying it's 27 minutes into the game. It's wonder time. One of the... Uh, Things that I think has been a discussion at the very least amongst and around Wonders is there is an option in this tournament as a bit of a sidetrack to, to, to select Conquest. You have to pick the home map to be able to select Conquest there. But um, there is a bit of a discussion around this as what would be the best solution to the Wonder? And I think the answer is in team games for every player added, you add two minutes. You add one minute. You add two minutes or something. So if it's a six-player thing, you add uh, six to 12 minutes onto the wonder timing. So that way, yeah, you're still getting that wonder up at about 30 minutes into the game, but the game's not going to finish until 50 minutes or 40 minutes, 50, 40 minutes, whatever it is. Uh, well, 50 minutes, yeah. That's going to be a, a more of an opportunity to be able to get across the map and actually take it out. But we'll see how things are going to go here as the Titan will finish here for Sparks first. He's got a lot of old Sarks on this to get it out. It will trade for the Titan of Virus here. And Mosca, he's going to be getting his own Titan out here. So we have to we have to see Zokyo either taking that one out itself or getting his own up. Because he does bring the villagers through onto this location to grab that one for himself there as well. As the Titan is now out for Sparks. The old suck starting to move forward here. Another Titan Gate coming down for Farron. You have to remember the Underworld Passage is still here to help Farron send villagers to the front of the uh, of the battlefield here really, really quickly. Or defend himself here in this game as the, the Titan Gate's all underway. 
there's two ways you can play this situation from GDM's perspective. One, you go for your own wonder here as well. You're obviously not going to beat your opponent. But you have it up there. So if you kill your opponent's wonder, that's going to be good. Or two, you just go to take the wonder down. You have to kill it somehow. We'll see how things are going to go. We do see naval oxybillies coming through, which can be utilized to pick off a potential fortified wall and hit a side raid for something, some, some sort of thing there. But there's no town centers in range of the water on this uh, on this map. But everyone's going to have a Titan out. Is this going to be six Titans out at once here? We do see a Son of Osiris is over here with 67 HP there. As a virus has done a valiant job here of holding on in this game. Lots and lots of catapults here as well as the Son of Osiris getting involved over here. You've got to be very careful with that one. Super out of uh, position where that's concerned. As the fight over this town center still rages on. Farron trying to grab it, but Moscow's doing a great job of utilizing this forest here to distract for the time being. Part of me feels like this game volume is just that little bit too loud, so I'm going to just turn it down a, hot, uh, a little a little bit there. As the uh, villagers shank down the uh, the Heliopolis and everything else over here, can Farron get this town center up at any point here and get a solid advantage? As you do see the Sparks Titan making its way in here, uh, as Sparks going to attempt to get some sort of a delay here. If you can get the Titan in onto Ninho's Titan, that's the aim here. He can actually take out an entire Titan here. We see Ninho attempting to get the path blocking happening, deleting the Longhouse and everything else up here. We see the Ulf Sucks getting pulled off. This is a great idea as the Ulf Sucks all get pulled around. Sparks not controlling this one very well though at the moment as the Titan of Vi Virus is getting a lot of kills off the pathfinding of this Titan. Manages to somehow get in here as he manages to get onto the Titan gate. Is it going to be enough though, after all is said and done, to then also get some damage done onto the Virus Titan gate here as well? He does manage to finish off the Titan of Nino. Great decision there from Sparks. Turns around and is going to be able to trade half HP for uh, the Titan of Virus. Great play there. There's going to be two Titans for uh, GDM with a half HP Titan or one and a half Titans for Team uh, Cud here. After all is said and done, great play there from Sparks. Great heads up play as the Titan is still trying to go up here. You've got to push in around this forest before you get try and get the Titan, uh, the Town Center up. It's just never going to go up. We do see the Wonder is completed. We do see towers coming up around on this position. But you've also got to be thinking about as many buildings as you possibly can here. Not just towers. Putting in granaries, putting in military academy stables, archery ranges, fortresses, and just like walls everywhere. You can't put... Um, you can't put wall segments there's a rule against that but there's nothing saying you can't just go ahead and do a tetris around this uh wonder to, to help defend it there as we're still seeing the uh attack coming through we've got some tyroi coming through her tyroi are really really good here they get 250 percent bonus damage versus um uh versus 250 percent bonus damage versus buildings I'm surprised to say I didn't actually know they have a negative 50% uh, reduction against uh, or resistance against building damage there as well as the Titan of Moscow or Zokyo sitting out the side here wanting to push forward waiting for the Titan of Farron to come through. It's important that the Titans work together because if you have one Titan fight two Titans then obviously it's going to be a, a sad state of affairs there as Zokyo pushes forward here. Where is he going with that Titan? Not paying attention. We see Mosca is in here, going to start getting that damage in. Zokyo still not pushing, uh, paying attention. That's two attacks in there for uh, Mosca at this point as Zokyo swinging through here. He's got to turn around and take this fight. Where's the Titan there of Farron? He's going to be using that to try and take out this position here as well. The Petropoli is going to be able to take out some of these towers, try and get that town center up as Moscow yet again defends over there. And we do see Zokyo going to pull back for the time being there as well. What is going on over here? As we see Zokyo getting some stables up. He's on the back here. We see the towers coming through here for uh, Moscow, but there, there's openings here. Got to be careful about that one, allowing Zokyo to just get in there with those units there. Is the Titan going to be trying to swing in for Farron at the moment here? Walls coming up over here. 
I'm gonna have to have words with Ninho about that one. Uh, that is 110% against the rules. Uh, and... Basically, if you're gonna be using that, you, you forfeit the match. So the game technically is over here, but... Obviously, the game already played, and maybe the players didn't notice it. No worries. Whatever. We'll have a we'll have a reminder about that rule and the consequences that happen from that. But okay. Matsukos coming through. Going to be uh, targeting down the uh, the Titan, trying to get that damage done. We do see the Titan of Zokyo still moving back and forth here as well. As the Ajax coming through onto this one, we've got the Heliopolis coming through for Mosca as well. As the Titan's going to be. Uh, trading themselves off here on this position. Obviously, Farron realizes he has to do it here, but he will have a lot of, uh, he will have a lot of stuff remaining. Meanwhile, the Town Center is now up for Farron on this posi position. He's got four Town Centers. Cud is in a, technically speaking, in a losing position here, and we also see, look at this, from Virus, uh, sorry, from Sparks here, says, you know what, instead of going for that one just straight away, we're gonna put a stop to not only uh, well, the trade route here, but also really, really taken Ninho out of this game uh, as we still see more stables coming up. The Hatairoi starting to come in. The villagers on this position as well. More Hatairoi coming in. We've got the chemo walls set up. Three layers here, but honestly, they don't last for that long. Uh, does he have conscripts or something? He does have conscripts. Oh, sorry, Levy here. So there's 20% faster on those as well as the Titan does end up winning here. 2,000 HP remaining. Probably not enough to kill off a Wonder, but could potentially break through here, get onto that Wonder, may potentially kill off a Town Center or do something. Uh, but the the, uh, the Tonki Caravans are very, very strong here. They are very, very strong at stopping a Titan from making any progress as Conscript, Conscript Cavalry comes through as well there for Zokyo. As the Titan bashes away those Ulfsark as best as it can, the uh, heroes getting some good damage done. Villagers getting sniped down there from uh, viruses and losing those as well. As the Town Center is up, the Spark still getting some damage done over here, getting the setup. He's got himself the upgrade already, Rampage. So those Fire Giants are coming out with a lot of heat as we're still seeing a Tyroi coming through. Towers, I mean, we said it already, 50% reduction against towers and 25% reduction from other buildings there as well for these Tyroi. They're really strong. The counter to Tyroi are units like Prodromus, are units like Camelry, are units like hoplites but there's nothing in here as these atyroi have made it through and there is a clear path with tons of stables in here i say tons there's three stables in plus this one over here for zokyo to continue pushing through three minutes remaining on this wonder but the atyroi have started to hit it as this is going down quickly there's lots of villagers repairing this one up the villagers are trying to shank back here but these are champion atyroi 188 hp HP, 34% hack as well as 56% pierce. They're not going down here fast at all. The wonder is getting cleaned up in this position really, really quickly. We see Nino trying to get himself up a wall here to prevent the reinforcements from coming through. The wonder is down to 4,500 HP. The Titan here of Moscow not in position to defend this one. Can it stay alive is the big question. So many villagers here for Moscow trying to keep this one alive, but is just not enough. It's just still going down. 500 HP, 100 HP, and it's down. Tokyo with looks to be about five. It's Oiroi remaining after all of that. Manages to kill the wonder. Nino taps out and CUD loses here in game number one against GDM as they manage to find a win here against Cud. An impeccably well played game here by GDM. Mosca here without the right defense against these Hatyroi. And he's just not able to defend that wonder. Honestly, if he had any amount of units here, anything, maybe even just deleted the Titan to get some units out on this position, he would have been able to hold it. Like, he's Hades, even if he had probably not making up archers here, but just like hoplites, he had champion hoplites, just get some hoplites into this position to defend. Would have been able to kill those to tire it off really, really quickly, but just didn't have them there. And GDM gets the first game. If you guys enjoyed this one, 
please consider hitting the follow on the Twitch. If you're on the YouTubes, hit that subscribe button. Here's a little bit of the stats with Farron with a military unit count. 449 Ninho popping off with the units killed, but it doesn't end up being enough there. All resource total here does favor Cud as well before falling towards the end of the game, relying on that wonder. You don't have to go all in on the wonder. You can continue to play the game a little bit more normal, but it just does not end up working out for him. Anyways, my name is Boyd, and I'll see you guys in the next game.